the sun shines bright on Caraconti. His first crops of racing age are showing brilliance on the racetrack with a high percentage of stakes winners. His versatility is evidenced by winners on all surfaces across the globe. And his offspring are lighting up the sales ring. With his biggest and best quality of books in the pipeline, the sun shines bright on this value sire. Kara Conti, standing at Gainesway. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. The DRF race of the day for Saturday, February the 5th, is the Grade 3 Holy Bull Stakes. Three-year-olds on the Kentucky Derby Trail going a mile and a 16th. $250,000 is the purse. It's race number 11 at Gulfstream Park. Our Derby prep coverage all season long is presented by Gainesway, home of the legendary stallion, tap it let's take a look at the field for the holy bull you can download free formulator pass performances for this race on the race of the day event page at drf.com access them and handicap along with us mike modonigal the number two is the three to one morning line favorite deservedly so off a game victory in the remsen at a mile and an eighth first start of the year for the todd pletcher trainee yeah, it looks like, uh, to me anyway, was one of the better two-year-olds uh, last year, Dan. Really improved once they stretched him out. Good, really good performance winning the, the Remsen the last time we saw him. Um, feels like he's supposed to be a major player going forward in this division. Pace makes the race at a mile and a 16th at Gulfstream. Short run to the first turn could adversely affect horses breaking from the far outside. And with a short stretch, it could help speed carry. Simplification went gate to wire going a one turn mile at Gulfstream last time out. And he should make the lead in the Holy Bull. Yeah, we'll see if it, um, what happens early in this race. Simplification's obviously going. Um, he showed sprint speed two and three starts back. I thought he you know, got away with a pretty soft pace when he won the Mucho Macho Man last time. Um, but he's supposed to go in here, Dan. I feel like um, White Abario, the eight, who the pace projector has second, um, I think he might be faster than Simplification early in this race. And I got to believe if they're just going to keep this horse um, going long for another start, they got to try to use his speed and see if he can stay. If you're familiar with the pedigree of the number one Galt, or if it looks familiar to you, you're right. This is a full brother to the magnificent Songbird. He won his third lifetime start, did Galt, at Gulfstream Park back in December. Let's watch that race right now at two turn affair over this distance, as a matter of fact. And there wasn't a ton of pace in here. They went the opening quarter in 25 and two. We see Galt getting to the outside, and he's going to drive clear in the stretch. He's still learning. You can tell, Mike, by watching him run. There is ability here. He's going to have to improve in a hurry. This is a big step up in class. Yeah, they're stepping him right up off the maiden one and not into a, an easy running of this race either, Dan. So he is going to have to improve. Um, got a great trip in that race we just watched, but he he certainly did take a step forward there. It feels like there's probably a little more in the tank. Um, we'll see. I mean, I'm not going to be surprised if he improves again, but this is a really tough spot. The number two is your morning line favorite. That is Mo Donegal, who really has taken steps forward since being stretched out in distance by trainer Todd Pletcher. A winner two starts back, going a one-turn mile and a 16th, and then this effort in the Remsen going a mile and an eighth. Now, he sat in behind the leaders. He angled all the way out to the outside, and it looks like he's building up ahead of steam. For a brief instant right here, it looks like he's going to win pretty easily. But let's give credit to the runner-up, Zandon, who really digs down deep for Chad Brown. Mo Donegal and Zandon are going to go shoulder to shoulder and butt heads the final 16th of a mile. Mo Donegal got the nod. Yeah, he ran well in here. They both did, and they just left the rest of that field behind. Uh, Zandon was coming off of a really fast maiden win um, leading into that race, and these two horses both hooked up. They ran well in there. I thought both of them did. Um, certainly, Mo Donegal having to switch out from behind after Zandon got the jump on him. Um, I thought this horse ran really well to win that race. He was really impressive also, breaking his maiden the first time they stretched him out. Um, again, I, I'm, I feel like this horse is pretty good, Dan, and I'm very interested to see how he stacks up as they move along the derby trail. Good inside post as well with some tactical speed. He's likely to be in the second flight or so without losing too much early ground. The three Eloquist. Now, Eloquist was well beaten by Mo Donegal and the Remsen, and Butch Reed tried to regroup, dropped the horse back slightly in distance at Gulfstream earlier in this meet in a one other than, and the horse just didn't break very well. That's kind of been the story of his career, and they didn't run very well. 
Yeah, I mean, it's been a real problem for this horse. He really doesn't get out of the gate very well at all, and that could be a problem for him in here um, if he's going to wind up towards the back of the pack early. Um, to me, there isn't really that one race that you could point to, Dan, and say he's a, a major, major contender in this race. He's just going to have to take a huge step forward. Simplification, the number four, the expected pace setter on your Timeform U.S. pace projector, will be attempting two turns for the first time in the Holy Bull. Here's his route debut, one turn mile. The Mucho Macho Man, and he was able to get to the lead in this race, stays a little bit off the rail, turning into the stretch, then's going to get back inside, and he wins by four. And if you just look at the buyer speed figure, that 90 works very well, as well as the 92 from three starts back. He's a talented, fast horse. It'll be interesting to see how far he ultimately wants to go. Yeah, the distance is a question. We'll see um, how fast they wind up going early in this race because. You know, the pace projector thinks he's going to make the lead. I'm not so sure about that. Um, to me, he just had a really easy trip last time when he won that Mucho Macho Man. Nobody really went up the backstretch, and he didn't have any trouble at all making his way to the early lead. He finished that race off fine. Um, it's his second fast race, so that's another feather in his cap, I guess. Um, I just didn't really want him as one of the favorites, if he is indeed one of the favorites in here. I didn't really want this horse as he tries two turns for the first time. One of the better Florida-bred two-year-olds of 2021 was the number five, Cajun's Magic. Let's watch his most recent start in the Florida Stallion Series. This is the In Reality Division, and Cajun's Magic's first start around two turns. Now, the winner of this race, Octane, was arguably the best two-year-old in South Florida last year. I don't know where he is. He hasn't worked, I don't believe, since this race. Cajun's Magic showed no quit. He was on the chase throughout in this performance. This buyer came out of nowhere. 89, a pretty impressive number for a two-year-old in September. This is a big ask simply because of the layoff. We haven't seen this horse in four and a half months, but he just seems like an overachiever. Yeah, he does. Um, and he's got good tactical speed too, so that could certainly help his cause in here. Um, we'll see, Dan. You mentioned the buyer for that last race. It's it's really hard to get behind that figure. Um, Octane, as you mentioned, he was a really good horse last year, but he went from a 72 to a 92 in that race. This horse went from a 65 to an 89. Um, I don't know. That's a pretty hard figure to buy. I kind of want to see this horse do it again. The six is Tiz the Bomb, and he goes out for trainer Kenny McPeak, and we have a DRF formulator fact for McPeak when he teams up with Brian Hernandez Jr. 22% winners from the last 188 starts, a $2.23 return on investment. Tiz the Bomb and Hernandez won the Bourbon. They won the Kentucky Downs Juvenile Mile. They won the source's last start on dirt. Now, I know it was an off-turf race at Ellis Downs. This source won by the length of the stretch, he's pretty good coming off a runner-off effort in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. He really is. I mean, I, I you know, he still does have something to prove as a dirt horse. I know he broke his maiden uh, the last time he was on this surface by the length of the stretch. Um, but, you know, just sort of running away from a bunch of turf horses in there. I still thought he was pretty impressive, though. Um, I really like all three of his turf starts. I thought he ran great in the Breeders' Cup last time. Um, so we'll see if he can transfer that good form over to dirt. If he does, he's a major player in here. Spin wheel goes out for trainer Rusty Arnold off a maiden win at Churchill Downs towards the end of 2021. A spin wheel won from off the pace that day. He got a big pace to run at. He just got up. He's going to be running at the end of this race. The question is, A, is he good enough? B, does he want more ground? I think he might. I think he might too. I, I'm, I'm mildly interested to see what he does here, Dan. He's obviously too slow on the way in um, to be considered a major factor, but his his dirt debut at Keeneland Two Back, that was a, a pretty good performance for a horse who just got hung very wide um, off the pace in that race. Um, Leperu did a lot of good things last time, just sort of staying towards the inside and managing to get a run up the rail there to close that thing down. Um, I still feel like he ran pretty well there to make up a lot of ground. I don't know. I don't love him in here, but I think he's an interesting long shot. White Habario, the number eight, a grandson of Gainesway's super stallion Tappet. This horse won his first two starts at Gulfstream Park. He was tested last time in the grade two Kentucky Jockey Club, and he ran just fine. I think the winner of that race, Smile Happy, is a nice horse. The seventh place finisher came back to upset the grade three Lecomte with an 88 buyer. And Mike, as you mentioned, this horse has the tactical speed to get close, if not outright, on the lead. Yeah, he, he really does. I wonder if they'll decide to send him this time because they went forward um, in that Kentucky Jockey Club last time. 
Um, but they just decided they weren't going to put this horse on the lead. They raided him back. They sat him over behind horses. You know, he never looked like he was going to win, but he stayed pretty gainly in the stretch there to get third. Um, I feel like, again, if they're just going to keep going um, on this derby trail, at least for now with this horse, just let him use his speed and see how far he can take it. He hasn't run since November. No worries if you follow this DRF formulator fact for his trainer, Safi Joseph. 61 to 180 day layoffs, 25% winners, and a $2.34 return on investment. Giant Gain completes this field. And this is a horse that ran really well in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile at a price and only his third lifetime start, fresh off a maiden win. Let's watch Giant Gain because he's in the thick of this, turning into the stretch, chasing the quality Corniche. Giant Game's going to be a little bit one-paced at the end, but considering his lack of experience, it was all good, I thought. A uh, nice pedigree by Giants Causeway, a half to graded horses like Isotherm and Geo Game, and the horses that have come out of the juvenile have performed okay so far. Yeah, they have. This horse ran really well in that race. His maiden win at Keeneland was a, a really good performance. He showed much improved speed that day. Um, made a big run in that Breeders' Cup we just watched, Dan. Four wide around the final turn. He got in, into contention through the stretch before he flattened out a little bit. You know, to me, he clearly ran at least a second-best race that day behind Corniche. Um, he, he's a, I think he's a pretty dangerous horse. He didn't draw that great on the outside, but it feels like he's got plenty of tactical speed. What a fun race, the Holy Bull, the DRF race of the day. It is presented by Gainsway. Let's take a look at our top selections. I respect the speed of simplification. I respect the class of Mo Donegal. Cajun's Magic really usually isn't my type of horse. I'm not really someone that likes to go with horses off layoffs, but this horse has been working quickly, does have tactical speed. I think, he, again, he's an overachiever. He's got to be a good price in here. And, Mike, giant yeah. game might fall through the cracks. You might get an extra tick or two on the tote simply because of this outside post position. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they bet it. Behind Mo Donegal, who I do think is just going to be the favorite in here, and I think he's going to go a lot shorter than the morning line um, has him at. I'm a fan of that horse. I think he's good, and um, I do expect him to be tough to beat in here. But I also liked giant game last year, Dan. At a better price, I'll try him. 9261 for Mike, 5429 for me. It's the Grade 3 Holy Bull. Our Derby Prep coverage is presented by Gainsway.